Everyone is noticing that products are more expensive than ever and also very challenging to find lately. Shoppers are having to check different stores for particular goods, but still, most of the time they are unable to get what they want. Those who are hoping that the new year would mark a new era of abundance on our supply chains will be disappointed to find out that the various shortages that define 2022 are not only expected to continue this year, but analysts are also warning that they're likely to get even worse in the coming months. Conditions at stores will remain chaotic, and food industry experts say Americans are really going to be hurting in their wallet in 2023. That's what we're going to expose today, and we have a lot to cover in this video. But before moving on, we kindly ask you to support our work with a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Before supply chains were pushed to a breaking point, driving people to hunt for toilet paper and other basic essentials, few Americans ever thought about the supply chain. But by now, everyone has already experienced going to a store and not finding what they want. The origin of many of the product stockouts we still see today can be partially attributed to the interruptions caused by the pandemic. The end of lockdowns and virus outbreaks doesn't mean that every link that has been broken across this complex logistics network has magically returned to normal and that prices will come back to the levels they once were. Nicholas Ellis, partner at Foley & Nartner, an international law firm, highlights that though many of the current issues we're seeing in the supply chain still have their roots in the pandemic, they are not directly caused by the pandemic today. The health crisis was the perfect stress test for our manufacturing and distribution system. Much of the supply chain effectively shut down in 2020. But restarting something like the global supply chain is not as simple as flipping a switch, Ellis emphasized. Different parts of the chain came out of lockdown at different times. But periodic outbreaks and shutdowns, as well as labor shortages and other issues, often combined to create bottlenecks and delays, most notably around the ports. All of this was coupled with a large surge in demand for certain products. As a result of these and other challenges, the restart was rocky for many companies, and ongoing issues simply have prevented the supply chain thus far from returning to its pre-pandemic levels of efficiency, Ellis noted. The damage done to the system were far greater than anyone could have imagined. And while the health crisis has exacerbated those issues, it also showed holes in the industry's infrastructure and processes that have been there all along, as explained by Brian Ulster, General Manager of the North America Finance and Risk. As we look into a new year, supply chain risks continue to heighten within organizations particularly those that are most vulnerable to shortages and labor disruptions, he says. Today, some of the main issues companies are reporting are related to limited production and transportation to get their goods. In 2023, businesses are facing a proverbial death by a thousand cuts, according to Alster. Costs for all kinds of expenses, from salaries to materials, to the napkins in the cafeteria, and laundry for company uniforms are all going up. On top of that, every delay in shipment, every loss of productivity increases the company's overall costs and decreases the efficiency upon which modern global supply chains rely, the expert describes. Supply chain disruptions are here to stay for a while. We continue to see negative impacts from labor shortages, macroeconomic impacts, geopolitical unrest, natural disasters, and other shocks to the system, Elster outlines. Similarly, Ellis argues that while many people are waiting for a rapid return to normal, there are many reasons to believe that we won't see anything like that happening in the short term. We can't say with certainty what will be the next challenge faced by the supply chain, but we all need to be prepared, he warns. With a recession expected to aggravate many of the problems companies and consumers are already coping with, 
in addition to environmental catastrophes and an ongoing fertilizer shortage. The food supply chain is at the highest risk of experiencing persistent disruptions this year. In a recent interview with Fox Business, Tennessee dairy farmer and agricultural activist Stephanie Nash believes that 2023 is going to be rough, worse than 2022, she says. 2022 was a really hard year, the food industry expert added, but I think there's going to be a lot of shortages this year for sure. When asked about the severity of the shortages retailers and consumers will have to deal with this season, Nash answered, I definitely think we have a food security threat. We're going to have a supply chain shortage. We're going to have an increase in our food prices at the grocery store, she alerted. Every year, U.S. farmers typically take out short-term variable rate loans to pay for the supplies they need, from seeds and fertilizer to livestock feed and farm machinery, the Department of Agriculture reports. But aggressive interest rate hikes going from as low as 0% to as high as 6.57% in a span of just nine months has raised the cost of farm operations and in many cases turned planting and animal raising unprofitable. This year, the farming sector's total interest expense is forecast to reach nearly $26.5 billion, an almost 32% increase from 2022, according to USDA data. The elevated costs mean that farmers are being forced to decide whether they'll reduce their crops and cattle herds or endure as they scramble to repay larger loans. We see products in the grocery store increasing, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. We're not the ones pushing for increasing. We are making less than ever, the farmers stressed. You have family farmers and ranches that can't pay their bills. When you talk about loans, that's a big deal, she continued, revealing that food costs will continue to climb given that overall production costs are soaring everywhere. We have to be able to get paid more to produce more food, she explained. The farmer, who is a notable critic of the Fed's regulations, added that inflation is not expected to end anytime soon and Americans are really going to be hurting in their wallet because of it. The surge in food costs is making the supply chain struggle to keep up with demand. The USDA informs that the global fertilizer crisis prompted by the conflict between Russia and Ukraine has directly impacted U.S. crop production over the past year. Right now, fertilizer remains in short supply for farmers, and prices are between 70 to 100 percent higher compared to a year ago. That's an oppressive amount, especially considering that fertilizer comprises more than one-third of many farmers' overall operating costs. Government officials predict that this situation will become more dire in 2023. Moreover, increasing environmental disasters are also contributing to worsening food shortages all across the nation. Analysts expose that California's devastating drought has led to empty rice fields and a 10 to 15 percent loss of viable farmland. In other words, lost agricultural revenues from lost crops mean less money and land to produce the foods we consume every day. Everything from the milk industry around to almonds has been affected, said UC Davis agricultural economics professor Daniel Sumner. I think that's a big threat to the United States, weather, drought, and dwindling water supplies. We really didn't initiate any new programs to help farmers with devastation across America, the expert continues. A poll conducted by the American Farm Bureau Federation found that roughly three-quarters of farmers saw a reduction in harvest yields due to drought in the past 12 months. In an interview with USA Today, Florida citrus grower John Matz revealed that he lost over 50% of his crops due to Hurricane Ian blowing fruits off his orange and grapefruit groves. It's really gut-wrenching to see that amount of fruit that was lost, he said. At the same time, around two-thirds of ranchers and livestock farmers reported selling off animals, with the national herd size down by 
36%. Some states like Texas saw herd declines of 50%. New Mexico suffered a 43% contraction, and Oregon lost 41% of its beef cattle herd, which illustrated the wide geographic distribution of the distress. Look at Texas, how big they are in the beef industry, Nash exclaimed. It's a really sad situation to be in when farmers have to sell off their cattle so aggressively. Unfortunately, the doom and gloom don't stop there. Global shortages of grains, carbon dioxide, wood pulp, and other commodities are going to affect the availability of thousands of products in 2023. Food analysts at Mashed predict that bread, flour, oatmeal, vegetable oil, corn, tomatoes, soft drinks, canned goods, champagne, frozen goods, coffee, paper towels, and toilet paper will all be harder to find from here on. People may have to shop around or use different brands. The available brands may also hike prices to be able to meet the demand, they noted. Meanwhile, the shoppers grapple with lower supplies of everyday products. Retailers are stuck with an oversupply of products that consumers have no interest in buying anymore. They've been doing everything they can to move merchandise out the door as profits continue to fall. Things have drastically changed within the last two years. There is now too much inventory for retailers to sell, argues Nicola Kinsella, SVP of Global Marketing at Fluent Commerce. Due to supply chain issues, vendors overordered general merchandise in order to compensate for the shortfall seen last year. But now they're drowning in unwanted inventory due to the economic downturn. In some cases, they will only be able to rebuild inventories of essentials after they get rid of the items that are now occupying their warehouses. And that may take a long while, particularly now that Americans are curbing their spending and only purchasing everyday necessities. It's tough to react to a spike in demand, especially one that is across such a large population. Suppliers and retailers are, in many respects, still playing catch-up, highlights Shanton Wilcox, U.S. manufacturing lead at PA Consulting. The executive also noted that, in addition to shortages of groceries and other staples, we'll also see acute shortages for products like medicine, this winter, a nationwide scarcity of several high-profile prescription drugs, including the antibiotic amoxicillin and the ADHD treatment Adderall, will keep pharmacy shelves empty and lead patients to ration pills until there's a restock. Parents are also reporting shortages of over-the-counter pain and fever-reducing medications for their sick kids. Wilcox notes, that some medications are generally more vulnerable to shortage due to the lack of economic incentives to produce them. Manufacturing disruptions, labor issues, and ingredient shortages are reducing the availability of key medications all over the country. Even though the United States is a major developer of new medications for the world, it's also heavily dependent on other countries for the production of those substances. A series of raw ingredients that go into making medications are sourced from just two countries, China and India, reveals Mindia Vakil, chief executive officer of Resilink, a company that maps and monitors pharmaceutical supply chains with the aim of giving an early warning to clients when trouble's on the way. Any manufacturing interruption in China or India can have a ripple effect on the supplies of many products, including prescription and over-the-counter medicine. But even with normal levels of production, high demand during a tough cold and flu season, like the one the United States is experiencing at the moment, can make it hard for families to find what they're looking for. So far, it looks like there's no relief in sight for the many bottlenecks supply chains are still coping with problems are actually becoming more widespread as more and more shortages emerge, while manufacturers and retailers' ability to replenish inventories remains compromised. This frustrating situation is going to impact the lives of millions of Americans for yet another year.
We should all stay alert and prepare for the worst before things start to go downhill once again. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to know when our next video is coming up.